Years ago, I worked on a project called the Helios Airship Project. The project was to use solar-powered cargo airships that fly in the jet stream for high-speed sustainable transportation. The project was designed with two main design principles in mind. It was to be sustainable. Since it used only solar power, it had zero pollution, had zero emissions, and had essentially unlimited range. Flying at high altitudes meant it could avoid most bad weather, which historically has been the bane of other airship projects. Also, the cold temperatures at high altitudes increased solar power production, so there was plenty of power to run the ship's systems. The second pillar of the project was it was supposed to be profitable. By using the jet stream, it could reach high speeds of about 130 miles per hour in ground speed. And because it had no fuel costs, it was less expensive. So it had major competitive advantages over other forms of transportation. And we can look at cargo statistics for the areas right under the jet stream, which is most of them, and demonstrate that there was a huge potential for profit. But what was missing in these design considerations was a third core principle, which was very important. The project must also be practical. So now I have joined Aerobotics, a blimp drone development company known for their navigation systems and 3D flight control systems. With Aerobotics, I will be developing a new project called Majestics. The goal this time will be to work with things as they are, not how I wish them to be. That means my objectives must be achievable with my currently available resources and operate within the current regulatory framework. I will begin by developing a prototype blimp drone. Instead of a huge cargo ship, I will be making something much smaller, but still capable of flying halfway around the world. The blimp drone will need to fly under solar power day and night it will need to fly at 25,000 feet to take advantage of the jet stream for increased ground speed and to avoid most bad weather, but still be substantially below commercial air traffic. It will need to navigate autonomously, following a path through the jet stream's twists and turns calculated to get to the destination as quickly as possible. Aerobotics is already active in the development of model-based navigation, including taking into account weather effects and other parameters. The blimp drone will also need to carry a payload, which will be small at first, but it will grow over time, slowly. After a given design is proven, larger ones will be built with improvements learned from the smaller models. Now, most of this is things that I have in fact done before. I've already made solar-powered blimps that could fly overnight, and I've made blimps that could fly at altitudes even higher than what I'm attempting here. But this time, the same blimp will need to do both, and also carry a payload. In addition to the above, I will also need to carefully follow existing regulations for drone operation. So that means, while within a nation's airspace, the drone will not fly out of line of sight, it will not fly at high altitude, and it will not fly at night. But, once it enters international airspace, it will climb to 25,000 feet and begin its journey in the jet stream. And even when in international airspace, additional safety precautions will be taken, including a kill switch, which will activate if the drone rises too high, or it enters controlled airspace unexpectedly, or if it becomes uncontrollable. The kill switch will cause the blimp to deflate, and it will slowly fall to the ground in a safe manner. The final requirement is a very important one. While fulfilling all of the above requirements, the drone must also be as small and simple to manage as possible. Many previous airship projects have failed due to having a prototype too large and expensive to operate so they were unable to perform all of the tests and trials necessary to prove their technology. So there you have it. I'll be releasing more information as the project progresses. I hope to keep you all as involved and as well informed as possible. 
And please let me know what you think. I would love to see your comments and ideas below. Thank you for watching.